always remember this. Garden Roy Bill. This couple came in, he showed them, a, I think it was a truck. And, and, and then after you asked him if they were ready to do business, he said, well, we want to go pray about it. He said, well, come over in my office. <laughs> so Garden pulled him in his office. He said, let's hold hands. And Garden went praying, Lord, should these people get this vehicle? And each time he get to that party, he squeezed their head. <laughs> and I, and uh, unless Garden changed since the last time I see him, I doubt if he was in close to God. Well, people will use that excuse to not do what God told them to do. I'm going to pray about it. No, you're not. You just don't want to do it. Be truthful. I'm not led. How you know you're not led? You're coming from your head, not your spirit. I don't feel like I don't I don't feel like being accountable to others. I'm not always comfortable with what I have to do, but I gotta be comfortable in trusting God. I see your sister all but all the way in Lutcher, Louisiana. And then another trait that Adam had was he blames everybody but himself. That's a clear trait of the devil. Because that's the thing about a liar. Because if you catch a liar in a lie, what do they do? They tell you another one. <laughs> Why? They don't want to take blame for anything else. Turn to Big John 8. They don't want to be responsible for their lies. No, I don't want to lie. I want to tell you the truth. I want to keep myself in honoring God, doing what God has called me to do, that I, be, that I will be able to fulfill everything God tells me. Because when I start remembering this, because, you know, I had a dear friend of mine in the Bible, I think it's in the Psalms, he says, man has 70 years. I said, well, I like Genesis 6 and 3. He promised 120. Well, the first thing most people think, when you hit 70, it's over. No, it's not. Unless you're ready to go. But the Bible says you can have 120. But the devil will tell you, no, you can't. He's a liar. I saw a picture of my classmate. Uh, this week on Facebook with her mother, a 104, 105 years old mother. So don't tell me it can't happen. It's possible. That's a good place to say amen. You got Big John 8. Look at verse 11. She said, no one, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. Now, if, if you read a few scriptures above that, this woman was found in adultery. And this is the only one they tried to bring to Jesus. But I love what Jesus said because, see, this is another lie that you have to deal with. In Romans chapter 8, when you repent, I'm talking about, I'm not just saying, I'm sorry, like Mr. Brown character. No, when you say, Lord, I'm asking you to forgive me for whatever I've done against you, my fellow man or myself, he says, there is therefore now no condemnation. Okay, I guess I'm going to have to find it. I, I can't just say it. See, now this is for people who, who made a mistake and then they went to God and said, God, I need your forgiveness. I'm not talking about them scammers because all of us make mistakes. Look at verse 1 of Romans 8 and 1. Because this will set you free. Because you have to understand this. The moment, the hour, the second that you truly repent to God, you are free. I see you, Sister Jenkins. God bless you for coming in and being a blessing with us. Um, he says, Romans 8, verse 1. There is therefore now, he's talking to a believer, no condemnation to them. Oh, he's talking to me. Is he talking to you? To them which are in Christ Jesus. Now listen, let me help you. This is a spiritual conversation. When I truly repent, God said there's no condemnation. Now, what I did, I may still have to pay a price. But God doesn't condemn me spiritually. I still may have to go to jail or I may have to make financial amends. I may have to even give up my life. But God says there's no condemnation. He'll give me the strength and the power and the authority to do what he told me to do. Because I based that on what God, I remember, I believe it was Brother Copeland. This man had murdered someone. Got right with God 
and he asked Brother Copeland to be there when he was being executed. That's not God's best. Because I guarantee you God told him don't take another person's life. But the devil kept talking to him. But he couldn't hear until he was about to leave this earth. But God's telling you, even though there's a price you got to pay for what you did wrong, God said, I'm going to forgive you. And he says, there's no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Because this is the part people miss. I'm going to forgive you, but you got to be accountable. So yeah, I want you to forgive me, God, but I don't want to pay no price. But you wouldn't listen. You got to pay a price. I know it's not what you wish. Now, this let me, let me help you. This is the way it works. If you've been unjustly accused and prosecuted, then you got Proverbs 6. If you catch a thief, he must pay you back seven times greater. But if you have actually done wrong in your body, God will forgive you and there's no condemnation. That's what he said. But you still may have to pay a price. But he'll give you the strength, the power, and the authority to get through jail time, prison time, court, whatever it is. He says, to them which are in Christ Jesus, who, listen, who walk not after. He's talking to me. Is he talking to you? Walk not after the flesh. Why? But after the Holy Spirit. That's what I want. What about you? Come on, let's go back to uh, Big John chapter 8, because I got somewhere I believe in God to get to. But this is how Jesus, the truth, can speak to her and say, look, he has to say, where are your condemners? And she said, they all left. And he says, she says, no one. And Jesus is saying unto you, neither do I condemn you. But see, look, he put that semicolon in there, but go and sin no more. I'm going to forgive you. I'm not going to hold it against you, but you got to stop sinning. Oh, I wish, wish I had more help than that. Look at verse 12. Then Jesus spoke to them again saying, I am the light. That's what we're going to. See, the devil in his bunch is darkness. I'm going to the light of the word. The light will drive out the darkness that's in your, in your heart and drive out the darkness in your mind, and you start to see life the way God wants you to see it. And Jesus spake unto them again and said, I am the light of the world. He who follows me, is this you now? There's a difference in following the devil and following the light. He who follows me shall not walk. Look what he says. I'll not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. Oh, my goodness. He's talking to me. What about you? Drop down to verse 29. And he said, who sent me, he's talking about my father, is with me. Is he with you? Is God with you? The father has not left me alone. That's what the truth will do for you. If you embrace or, 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 or grasp or hold on to the truth, it is. He will not leave you alone. For I always do those things that please him. Is that your testimony? Yes. I will do what God has called me to do. Is that you? And look what he says in verse 30. And he spake those words and many believed him. Verse 31. And Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, if you abide in my word, the word of truth, you are my disciples indeed. Is that you? Because let me help you. And, and when, you, when you're going towards the mark, the high calling of God, you have a lot of distractions and lies coming at you. But you're going to have to train yourself. I'm going to focus on what the truth says. Not the hell that's coming against me. 
Because there is a time, the Bible say, due season. Oh, glory to God. Oh, Lord, I thank you for due season. Because near my house, there's a field, and they're planting all the time. And they'll, sometimes you see, see nothing but dirt out there and weeds just growing. Then all of a sudden, you see these massive tractors. My mother, my, my wife was fascinated that they have air conditions and tractors. She said, my grandfather would have been overwhelmed to have an air, air conditioning in the tractor. And I thought I knew what I was talking about. And it's just in the last few years, they start to air condition tractors. And all that heat, you're out there digging up that ground, getting it prepared for planting. And once they plowed up that ground and they got it prepared for planting, then it's time to put the seed. And when you put the seed, now you got to water the seed. You got to water it. Now, you got to make your rows in such a way that it drains properly, because we live in Louisiana. Because sometimes we get too much water. But he says, what I've watched him do, I watched this. And he tells us in, in Genesis 8 and 22, that's why you keep hearing me say it. As the earth remained, it's still here because we're still here. There is seed time and harvest. I see you, Brother Melvin. There is seed time. And when you plant good seed in the good ground and it's properly watered, I don't care what's going on all over the world, that earth is designed by God to produce what's been planted in it. Glory to God. It's going to produce what's been planted in it. That's why I keep planting the word. What about you? Because look what he says in verse 32. And you shall know the truth, not a lie. And the truth shall make you what? Free. Lord, I'm, I like being free. What about you? I prefer to be free. What about you? Because he's still, in verse 34, he's telling you what it's like to be caught, caught up in the wrong things. He says, and Jesus answered them, most assuredly I say to you, whoever commits sin is a slave to sin. Whoever is a compulsive liar is committed to sin. You've allowed it to become a habit. God wants to break that spirit over your life. That you learn how to keep your mouth shut instead of telling a lie. I'm on my way. <laughs> I'm going to call you back. Uh, I didn't see you. Yeah, I saw you. I just went on the other aisle. So hope you didn't see me. So I'm a, oh, yeah, I'm going to pay you back. <laughs> no. He wants you to be a, a man, a woman of God of truth. Because if not, you become a slave. You're bound by the compulsive spirit of lying. You're bound by it. Because that's what the devil is. He's compulsive. He doesn't know how to stop. He doesn't know how to stop lying because he is damned to eternity. But look, this is for us. Verse 26. Therefore, the Son of God, Jesus Christ, makes you free. You are what? Free indeed. My days are lying are over. Don't ask me if you don't want the truth. I'm trying to tell it to you where I won't hurt your feelings, but I'm going to tell it to you. No, baby. No, sweetheart. Them six-inch heels wasn't made for those no. No size 22 men's shoe. You may do it. You know, I always go back to this. You can buy a brand new, you know, I, I love the Cadillac. I love the Cadillac Escalade. I got to drive one. Uh, one of the new ones. Sticker price, $103,000. And if I go to the dealership and they give me the title to it, and it's mine. And I got it insured to driving on the state of Louisiana. 
It's mine. I can go to the filling station and pick up the water hose and put it in the gas tank and fill it with water. Because it's mine. Now you, anybody with reasonable sense know if I put water in the gas tank, it's going to destroy the engine. Just like if I go to the radiator and I put gas in the radiator instead of water. Well, they got different solutions now. But what I'm trying to get you to hear, it's your choice. Choose wisely. Verse 47. He who is of God hears. Big John 8 and 47. Are you there? Here's God's word. Is that you? When you're hearing the word of God, you are dedicated and committed to hearing the truth. Therefore, you do not hear because you are not of God. Is that God saying it about you? See, you can't fool God. You might be able to play us. You might be able to fool us, but you can't ever fool God. And you can't fool God, and the worst person to fool is yourself. Listening to error, listening to lies and deceptions. No, I want what God says. I want to have what God promised. What about you? I want to hear the truth. He who is of God hears God's word. Is that you? Therefore, you do not hear because you are not of God. When the word of God is going forth and you can't hear it, maybe you need to change who your daddy is. Turn to Matthew chapter 13. Look at verse 11. This is Jesus speaking. And he answered and said to them, said to them, because it has been given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven but to them, it has not been given. If you're not connected with God, he's telling you, you won't understand God's word. So you got to open up your heart that you can hear. And if you drop down to uh, Matthew 13 and 15, he says it like this. For this people's heart is wax gross. In other words, their heart is covered. The word of God can't get in. And their ears are dull. Their ears are covered. They can't hear the word, and the word can't get into their spirit. I don't want to be dull of hearing. You know, I make the joke, and I've been married a long time. I don't always listen. That's not true. I'm trying to listen at my wife because God called her to be my helpmate. I mean, I like the presentation, but I'm trying to get the goods. And the eyes, they have closed. See, he's talking about when you are not in a position to hear from God, he says, your heart is covered over. Can't, God can get into your heart. He's trying, but he can't. Then he says, your ears are covered. You're dull of hearing. You can't receive anything. The word can't get in it. And then he says, then your eyes are closed. you like this. And go back to that old dumb song we used to sing as a kid when I was a child. I am blind, I can't see. If I knock you down, don't blame it on me. What was that? An excuse to walk into people and knock them down. But he's telling us, I want you to be able to let the word of God get into your heart. I want your ears to hear the word. I don't want you to be dull of hearing. I want you to be open. I want to be perked when I hear the word of God. And that my eyes are open that I might see what God is saying and how he's leading me. At any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand that their heart and should be converted and I should heal them. See, God wants to heal you. He cannot heal you if your heart is waxed over. He cannot heal you if your eyes are closed to the truth. He cannot heal you if your ears are dull. Bible in basic English says it like this. For the heart of the people has become fat. You don't think you need God. 
And the ears are slow. Are you a slow listener? <laughs> Hearing and their eyes are shut. He's talking to you. Open your heart. Open your ears and open your eyes to the truth. Uh, the Bible and Good News Translation says it like this. Because their minds are dull, that means that your mind cannot be renewed. And they have stopped up their ears. Wow. And have closed their eyes. Uh, our first usher, usher in Lutcher was in the Korean conflict, I think it was. I don't think it was in World War I, but he was in one of the wars. And he was a paratrooper. And one of the things that paratroopers would do they would take the filter of the cigarettes and put it in their ears to keep their ears popping. It went on for a number of years. I'm going to say like 30, 30 or 40 years before they did an ear exam and found out his hearing was impaired because he had a part of a cigarette filter in his ear. God wants you to hear his word. He wants you to receive it in your heart. He wants you to see what he can do. And the Good News translation that says it like this. Because their minds are dull and they have stopped up their ears and have closed their eyes. Is that you? Otherwise, their eyes would see. If you would open up your heart, can, you can see. If, their ears, if they would use their ears to hear the word of God and their minds would understand, they would turn to me, turn to Jesus says God, and I would heal them. I want God to heal me. I want God to be in my life. I want him to lead my life. What about you? For that to happen, I got to open up my heart. I got to open up my ears. I got to open up my eyes. Because I want to hear. I want the word to have its place in me. I want the truth. Is that your testimony? Verse 16, he says, But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. I thank God for the ability to see. And I'm talking about spiritually as well as naturally. Because you can have natural eyesight and can't see nothing spiritually. And what happens is you become dull. And when you get around people that know God and know the ways of God, they'll pick up just like that. You're spiritually dull. Because you've not put yourself or you've not kept yourself in an environment where people are speaking God's truth. This is progressive revelation. If you're not in an environment where you're progressing in the things of God, because this is what God keeps dealing with me about to say to you. Doing these test trials and tribulations that we've gone through from 2020 and 2021, instead of you becoming a spiritual giant where you can take the meat of the word, you still on meat, milk. Instead of you growing, you've gotten worse. And it's like, we're having to rebuild. We're having to start all over again. We're having to start you like a baby. Why? Because you won't grow. And God can't make you want it. I'm not going to let the lies of the devil stop me from doing what God's called me to be. I'm going to read this and we'll, we'll believe God to take up from here next week. Verse 25. But while men sleep, hmm. His enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. What are you doing? Because see, you can, be a, you can be physically alert but still sleep. You can be spiritually asleep. You don't grasp what's going on. Your family under attack and you say, who can I call? You better know how to call on the Lord. You better know how to give the word yourself. Because God needs you woke, as the kids are saying now. We need you woke. We, you need to be woke spiritually. Because there's an attack that is coming against each and every one of us. But you got to know how to stand your ground on the word, in the leadership, in the spirit of God. And stop listening to the compulsive liar. Because he said you could never get born again. See, he told me I could never get born again. And... Then he told me I couldn't live that life. And he's a liar. 
If you want to see a miracle, you're looking at one. Because I took God at his word. And he performed a miracle in my life, in my heart, in my relationships. He has opened doors for me because I trust his word. Oh, I, I may not, on paper, I may not have your millions, but I have the creator universe living on the inside of me. I may not be the best looking one at the Mr. America contest, but I have the God, the Father, the Son living on the inside of me because I understand. I thank God for this life on this earth, but there's another life. That's what I'm preparing for. I'm preparing for the life after I leave this earth where I spend eternity with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Will I be welcome in the throne room of grace? Will I be welcome in the kingdom of God? I have a citizenship with God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I'm living not for just for this earth. I'm living for when I leave this earth. Because I promise you, I don't want anything worse than what I've gone through on this earth. What about you? Mm -hmm.